In your CCNA studies, you learned about basic routing and switching technologies that could be used for a small to medium-sized business. But now at the CCNP level, in the route curriculum, we want to examine enterprise networks. An enterprise network typically has one or more main offices connecting out to multiple branch locations. And we may have multiple connections going out to the internet. And in this video, we want to take a look at some of the architectural components that are commonly found in an enterprise network. First, let's take a look at the building access layer of an enterprise network. Notice this is part of the campus network. That's the network that we're considering to be part of a main corporate location like the headquarters. And the building access layer oftentimes contains layer 2 switches like Cisco Catalyst switches connecting out to end user devices. PCs, printers. These switches might be configured to do authentication using 802.1x. We might have different VLANs, different broadcast domains configured on these switches. And these building access switches, they connect up to a building distribution layer. And the building distribution layer, it's also part of what we're referring to as the campus network. And it's acting as an aggregation point for the switches down at the building access layer. It's common to have multi-layer switches at the building distribution layer, and these switches might be interconnected with ether channels. Notice we have a couple of connections between our building distribution layer switches, and there's an oval around those connections. That oval is representing an ether channel where we're logically bonding together multiple physical connections into one logical connection. That's gonna give us more throughput. It's gonna give us some load balancing over those different physical connections. The multi-layer switches at the building distribution layer, they they connect up to the campus backbone. And the campus backbone is probably going to have a higher end multi-layer switch. And the campus backbone layer is really concerned with speed. How quickly can we get a packet from one building distribution layer multi-layer switch to another multi-layer switch? And typically all of the network traffic happening within our headquarters location is going to be in one of these three layers. Of course, in an enterprise network, we're probably going to connect outside of that one location. And we have another architectural layer that's in charge of that. It's the edge distribution layer. The edge distribution layer might contain routers or it might contain multi-layer switches as we see here. And this layer is going to get us out to the internet perhaps or maybe two remote offices that we have. For example, if we connect out to the internet, we might be connecting via one or more routers, maybe via one or more internet service providers or ISPs. If we have more than one connection out to the internet, that can give us some redundancy and depending on how we have things set up, maybe more throughput. And sometimes when we connect out to a remote office, we're doing so through the internet. As we're going to be discussing in this course, we can set up a secure VPN, a virtual private network connection, over an untrusted network like the internet. However, we might have some other IP WAN technology that gets us from our main office out to remote offices. Some of the classic technologies that we've seen in the past in the WAN aggregation layer include things like frame relay, ATM. However, in modern networks, it's more likely to be something like MPLS, multi-protocol label switching. And also note that I've listed some routing protocols that we might typically find in the campus or in our internet gateways or in our WAN aggregation layers. Within the campus, we're probably using some sort of IGP, an interior gateway protocol, like RIP or OSPF or EIGRP, all three of which we're going to be discussing in this course. We might have similar IGPs, similar routing protocols, used in the WAN aggregation layer going out to our remote offices. However, when we connect out to the internet, if we do have more than one connection, we're probably going to be using BGP, Border Gateway Protocol. That's an EGP, that's an exterior gateway protocol. And this course is going to get into exactly how do we connect out to an internet service provider using BGP? How do we influence route selection? And how do we connect out to an ISP using IP version 4 or IP version 6?